Hello friends, welcome to Abacus Acumen. So in this video, I will take you through the part 2 portion of the linear static analysis. So in this part 2 video, we will look at input deck overview in Abacus format. And for this, I will take one simple example, the plate uh, applied with a point loads at center area and then uh, it is uh, held at four corners. This simply supported uh, plate is modeled in preprocessor. You can see the four node cell elements which are uh, constrained at the corner nodes like four corner nodes and the node IDs are one, three, four, six and uh, at midline we are applying C load that is a point force load and the node IDs are some special numbers I have given just for our understanding and recognition later. So 77, 88 and 99. So these are the node IDs uh, for this uh, the mid nodes where we are applying the point uh, load of 50 Newton. So with this uh, FE model in place, once we prepare the deck file, the input deck file looks like uh, what is highlighted over here. So one is uh, we have this standard like we have this uh, keynote node star node that is a keyword for node. We have the star element, the type is S4 that is a four node cell elements and the element set is a plate. And this uh, element set plate we are applying uh, th thickness of two millimeter and then followed by a material of steel. And then here I am defining node set. Uh, there are two ways to define a boundary condition. One is you can define these those four corner nodes uh, constrain it by each uh, individual node IDs, or you can uh, make a bunch of these uh, four corner nodes uh, as a node set, and you can simply with in one sentence you can or in one keyword you can use this node set and define all those bonding condition, all those uh, corner nodes uh, bonding condition. And uh, we have this uh, star step and th this is where we are the loads and bonding conditions will start under this star step uh, keyword. And the star static is the uh, static for the static simulation where to trigger the static simulation with uh, defining keyword star static. And this uh, star static had have uh, four variables. So 1.0 that is the first variable is at initial time increment and the second variable is a time period for of the time step okay and the third is the minimum time increment allowed and the last final variable is the maximum time increment allowed so as this is a, a linear static analysis so there is no increments or uh, small steps in, involved we are uh, solving it by applying all load at one time that is all uh, load whichever we are applying as a C load, all these loads are applied at one, one time. So this is initial time increment is 1.0 and then the final time period is also 1.0. Had it been a case like where we want to, uh, it's a non-linear case, had it been a case of non-linear geometry or non-linear material, then we need to have this as a small number, maybe 0 0.001 so that we can apply an incremental load and then it will slowly reach to the full load of 1.0 but th this is this is not the case over here we are just you we are discussing on linear static analysis so the initial time step will remain 1.0 and then the final also remain 1.0 this rest of the two pair variables if you don't define that is fine the solo will automatically assume it so no need to worry about it and then the nodal force of 50 newton uh, are you know is applied at the three mid nodes so the keyword for nodal point force is C load for Abacus and these are the special numbers you know earlier I discussed with you that is 88, 77, 99 and we are applying uh, uh, point force in jet direction that is 3 and uh, it is in negative jet direction so we are using minus 50 Newton on each of these uh, mid nodes. This is a simply support uh, condition at corner nodes and these are the corner node IDs 1, 3, 4, 6 and 1 and comma 1 is a x direction constraint and 3 is z direction constraint okay so when we write in abacus 1 comma 3 what abacus assume that all the free degree of freedom between 1 to 3 are constrained so when we say all the degree of freedom 1 to 3 then what we can uh, we can understand is 1 comma 2 comma 3 all the x y g all these three translation degree of freedom will be constrained. Okay. I will give you some more information over here. Uh, just hold, I will make a, a right. Uh, I just prepare some background for it. Okay. 
so this is the same like one three four six these are the node ids let's let's talk about only one node id and how we can change play around the the degree of freedom considering the different degree of freedom okay so this is the original condition what we have is one it is node id one and it is constrained in uh, x direction y direction z direction okay if some if tomorrow you know at some time you you want to say okay i want to constrain only all x direction and then we i want to constrain in in a rotational uh, say z direction okay so in that case how you do it so let me write what you want to constrain okay so whenever there is a comment we have double star so what i want to you want to do is i want to constrain or a constraint x y z okay and then you want to constrain the sixth degree of freedom that is rotational in z direction okay so how you define this in abacus okay so we have a node id 1 okay and then you have x y z so this x y z are serially numbered that is 1 2 3 so you can define x that is 1 and comma 3 so when we say 1 comma 3 it will consider in between uh, degree of freedom also that is 2 that is for that is for y y direction y translation and then comma 0 you are constraining this so it is 0 point there is no displacement that is 0.0 point zero. and also you want to constrain on the same node the rotational degree in z direction that is the sixth direction so again node id 1 okay and say 6 comma 6 comma 0.0 point zero. so this is how you have to constrain for different uh, degree of freedom so this is little tricky so i want you to remember and uh, and use this uh, you know efficient way of uh, editing deck okay and it is very easy once you understand this it will be very uh, you can really play around uh, with bounding conditions uh, without really going back to preprocessor and uh, doing these things repetitively so it's very straight forward so once you got to know how it is defined in the abacus format will be easy okay so let me uh, bring it to the original file okay so i just uh, got back the original file uh, wherein we have only 1 to 3 that is 1 2 3 degree of freedom are constant and the finally uh, you you have to invoke the output request to the solver and this you can do is by defining star output comma field comma variable is equal to preselect comma frequency is equal to 1 so this key variables with the star output is very essential so if you don't give this keyword then then solver may not write the output in odb file so you have to make sure that in each of your problem you have to write a uh, output request so for that you have simply what you have to do is this is a very standard keyword definition and even if uh, the one good thing about this uh, all these variables is like if you define star output comma field and variable is equal to pre select so what it does is so depends upon your problem uh, nature of your problem say in this case it is a it's a linear static analysis so it will automatically abacus will give uh, output so which are very essential for this problem for example for linear static analysis what we require is displacement nodal displacement and nodal strain and the stress okay so so what it does is so this with the pre select option the output results what we can expect is like reaction forces moments stress component at in, uh, at integration points special displacement node so these are the essential parameters or the output uh, variables what we will interested so if it is non linear problem it will write for plastic strain and all the other parameters also you can expect it to be written okay the one what is the take away over here is uh, we have this star output field comma variable is equal to pre select and comma frequency is equal to 1 so this is the sufficient to get the put a desired output star node print is the keyword by which you can request solver to provide specific nodal output such as reaction force for spec required set of nodes 
so so how the keyword look like uh, star node print comma frequency is equal to one and node set is a constant nodes for reaction force so this is uh, with this name we have created a node set having those four corner nodes ids and summary is equal to s comma total is equal to s so once you write this keyword we have to also add the reaction force that is rf uh, so it will uh, ask for reaction force for those uh, these node set okay so with this uh, you know we are completing the input deck file <coughs> once we have this input file uh, we will uh, submit for abacus uh, solo run and uh, with this we'll have a set of uh, result files so out of uh, those set of result files uh, the we need to uh, look for the dat file so in that file you can find the reaction forces written for this constraint node uh, set okay so this is a constraint nodes for reaction force so once we open the dat file you uh, directly search for with this uh, name of this uh, node set and uh, and usually you find it uh, at the bottom of the this dat key file and you can see in in this it is a tabulated form you can look for the node id 1 3 4 6 so these are the node ids and then the columns for reaction force in x direction rf1 rf2 rf3 that is x y z direction and then followed by the column for uh, uh, moment in uh, x direction y direction and g direction so in this uh, example uh, we are applying only the d g direction force negative g direction so we expect the reaction force will be in positive g direction and uh, it would be divided uh, equally by four corner nodes at four corner nodes so the magnitude would be 37.5 newton so if you sum sum, sum up these four uh, reaction forces we will get uh, 150 newton which is equal to the applied uh, load uh, like what we applied as a c load over here so so uh, the same uh, reaction force i mean uh, reaction force you will be getting uh, from this uh, simulation this is about the overview on abacus input file and its important keywords and now we will uh, give you the hands-on demonstration of uh, how to prepare a linear abacus uh, static analysis fe model using uh, hypermesh as a preprocessor you can continue watching part 3 video in part 3 video i will take you through the step by step method of building this a plate fe model in hypermesh preprocessor so once we build this abacus input file of this plate model we will solve it in abacus solver and take a look at the results as well thank you for watching this video bye bye